Our next guest has been called the Judy Bloom, yay, <laughs> of Kitty Rock by the New York Times, and uh, he's also been called the best singer-songwriter of the genre, that is indie family music. You might know him, he's a two-time Grammy-nominated artist. His name is Justin Roberts, and he is next. And by the way, he's got a brand new album out called Lemonade, which features the great Robbie Folks and Nora O'Connor, and it was just released. And I understand he's got a prop as well, like everybody else. So welcome, Justin Roberts. Tony calls it a prop, but I call it a pacifier because uh, I don't like speaking in front of people, but I can perform music in front of people, so I'm just going to hold it to make me feel more comfortable. Um, anyway, <laughs> so um, some people know me because I write songs about whales and snow days and taking off training wheels, and they might wonder if I'm an adult because I can get inside a kid's mind pretty well. Um, but the story today is about a different time in my life when I was an adolescent. And uh, sometime between 7th and 10th grade, like somewhere between the Grateful Dead and Sonic Youth for me, discovering them, uh, I sort of lost interest in academics and in school and, uh, you know, just felt like I sort of lost my way for a while. And during this time, um, you know, like most adolescents, we probably were not the nicest to some of our teachers. I remember one time I was in economics class and uh, we had a substitute and the whole class just tormented this poor substitute teacher and just we were horrible to her and she sent people to the office and it was, it was during the time of Reaganomics in the 80s and our regular teacher, Mr. Treeman, came back and he said, what happened here? You guys were horrible. I can't believe you behaved like this. And I said to, I raised my hand, I said, Mr. Treeman, she was a supply cider. <laughs> and he goes, she was? And everyone was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, she's stupid. And then that was the end of that. But the real story is about, <laughs> anyway, the real story is about Mr. Frymouth, who is my English teacher. Uh, my t it was this teacher I just did not like from the beginning. He did not like me. We did not get along at all. Uh, and this sort of came to, this, this kind of moment happened in the, in the library one day when I was sitting at a desk and he sort of came up and was talking to someone else and said, you mean like you wouldn't slug someone like this? And he, he sort of hit me on the back a little harder than you should. Like it wasn't, it wasn't totally cool. And almost by reflex, I sort of punched him in the stomach, which this is a children's musician punching a teacher. So anyway, he drags me off to the office and, or, it, or starts to, and I say, you know, you hit me first. And he was like, okay, well, you you're, have to come to detention every, every day for a week to my class. So I come to his class. And we're supposed to do a book report, and so he's having me work in the class, and I'm sitting there reading the anthology, I think, that we were given. And I come across this poem uh, that really spoke to me. Uh, let's see if I can find it. I should have marked my book like <laughs> two did. So I found this poem that said, Beehive. Within this black hive tonight, there swarm a million bees. Bees passing in and out the moon, bees escaping out the moon, bees returning through the moon, silver bees intently buzzing, silver honey dripping from the swarm of bees. Earth is a waxen cell of the world comb, and I, a drone lying on my back, lipping honey, getting drunk with silver honey, wish that I might fly out past the moon and curl forever in some far off farmyard flower. And I don't know what it was about that poem that some of the repetition or something in it, uh, maybe it was just that it talked about getting drunk. I don't know. But that, that poem like, really spoke to me, and I looked, and it was from this book called Cain, which was, it said it was a masterpiece of the Harlem Renaissance. And so I got this book, and I read it, and I loved it. It was all these character studies of these kind of lonely people from the South, and it's short stories and poems, and just amazing. And I wrote, wrote this book report, and Mr. Frymouth said, oh, if you like that, you should read Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man. So I read that, and then I read Langston Hughes, and I read Richard Wright, and I got way into this, and I was like this white boy from Iowa, but for some reason, this, all this stuff spoke to me so much, and it just like reignited the whole, like the fact that I was in school, and I cared more about school, and I started reading, and uh, it, 
I don't know, it, it still sticks with me like that song that you hear when you're 15 years old and it's just like the thing that matters to you the most. And this book like still sticks with me and every time I reread it, I'm just still like, this is such an amazing book. How did I find this thing? And I guess it actually went out of print for a long period of time and it was sort of popular early on and then was out of print for a long time and came back into print. And anyway, Cain by Gene Toomer is the book that changed my life. And I'm gonna play just a very small segment of a song that I wrote much later on that happened to use this little bit of imagery from that poem almost unconsciously, which I think is so, something that's so much fun about art that it sort of seeps into your blood. Uh, and this is a song I wrote after my grandmother passed away. It's called Fruit Jar. She used to can fruit, and my aunt gave me a can of fruit when she died that I had on my windowsill for a while, and I would look at it all day, and I'm just going to play the, the chorus in a verse. But uh, we, t- we take that train. Wait, I don't even know how to play it on the ukulele. Maybe I should have brought the other instrument. <laughs> oh, there it is. We take that train. Will you take it around? Will you get back up when you've fallen down? Will you rise or will you fall? Will you find love? Well, I hope you're gonna find it all. Cause life ain't no fruit jar stuck in a cellar. Sometimes you just gotta spin that old propeller and Watch it rise up way past the moon And if love don't find you, you know it's gonna be there soon Thank you very much.